Hold on. I've got to lock my tripod in. Most people do this before they start filming, but I have decided. Oh, hey, there's me. That's my face. All right, it's gonna be an absolute miracle if this stays. Oh, miracles do happen. It's so wonky. I'll just like tilt my face to the side like this and then maybe it'll work. No, come on, we've got this. We've got this, even if I have to like, like stand with my feet on it for a little bit. Whoa. 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 Hello. Hello. Hello, humans. Ah! Here we go. Here we go. Is that gonna work? Oh my god, it's motherfucking working. Yes! Yes! Hello, Josh Lowe. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. I am gonna put my hair back up. I've got one of those bird's nest things in the back of my head. You know, okay, girls, please tell me that you hear me in this when you go to sleep. And then I don't even know what happens. I didn't have sex in my sleep that I remember. <laughs> I didn't do anything in my sleep that I remember apart from lie there with my eyes closed. And I wake up and there's a motherfucking like bird's nest has come and laid itself in the back of my head. Guys, I don't know if you get this. Maybe you get this too. Guys and girls, please comment below if you feel me on the bird's nest. So I am going to put it back for that exact reason. Um, I just wanted to come and do one of these because it's fun. Hey, Shan. Oh, my God. You absolute babe of human. Hello. It's so good to see you on here, beautiful. Oh, all of the humans coming to hang. Hello, humans. Hello. Oh, this makes me happy. This makes my heart and my womb and my soul so happy hanging with the humans. So I wanted to, um, I just come into like full performance mode. I'm like, all right, let's get down to business. But seriously, I just want to have fun. And I just wanted to hang with you girls and guys because it's fun to hang. And I love filming these videos. I love doing lives for no apparent reason. Even when the camera's a little bit wonky, and I could just like lean like this and make it look really straight. Maybe I need to lean like this and it'll look really straight. <laughs> I don't know. Um, even when it's wonky, even when it's crazy, even when the world is, feels a little bit chaotic and wild and like, woo, I am choosing to just come and hang and show up. There are a few things that I want to speak about, I guess. Like there's some things that might come through. I'm getting the feeling that they will. But mostly I just love that like doing these lives raises my whole fucking vibration. And I just feel like God herself speaks through me. Claire there, hello beautiful woman. Taryn, oh, all the humans are coming to the party. Stay guys, because it's going to be really fun. Um, I just feel like just doing these videos. Hi Erin, hi beautiful girl. Just doing these videos, like the act of just filming this, like raises my vibration. And I find that I'm like, I just want, it feels really expansive and it feels like I just want to explode into stardust. So I'm just going to keep choosing that. Um, and I definitely didn't wake up feeling like I wanted to explode into stardust to stay today. Um, you can ask anyone that saw me before 7.30 this morning, including really only my mother. And I was like, she knocked on my door. She's like, good morning. Can I come in? I was like, why? She's like, I want to say good morning. I was like, you can say that from the other side of the door. <laughs> I'm very like, I'm very in touch and in love with my inner bitch and the love between us is unconditional. So she just knows that. Um, but this morning I did not feel in a good mood and today I've been feeling um, all the feels, but mostly some sadness and some hopelessness, some worthlessness, some, what else have I felt today? I was literally on my yoga mat before being like, just inadequacy, like full on, like I can't fucking do this. I'm so inadequate. And then I could feel like the expansion beckoning and like that call to come back to life. And sometimes I feel the call and sometimes I just don't. Sometimes I just have to choose it. But it just reminded me of like the power of our choice. Like I didn't actually know that I could choose this. I thought I had to wait to feel good again. Hmm, no, we never have to wait to feel anything ever. We never have to wait for anything or anyone to feel how we want to feel. Like, poof, who knew that? Who fucking knew that? No one taught me that. I taught myself that. I downloaded that shit from the cosmos because no one's fucking writing about that in a book. They probably are. Actually, there's lots of books spare that, but I just haven't read them. <laughs> but 
seriously, I had to choose it. It's one of the hottest and like, I feel like I'm doing these ones. Come and have a chat. It's like the hottest thing. I feel like a dad at a barbecue now, like a, yeah, what's up? What's up? Yeah, how are your kids? Yeah, my kids are good. How are your kids? My inner man is so on point, P.S. My inner man is like, oh, I was watching a video today of me when I was really little. I was like 10 and I was dressed up as a guy and I was fully fucking embodying that like inner boy like I, or inner man, really. And I was like, when did I stop doing that? Like, when did I stop like knowing how to be a man? Um, and I'm pretty sure it was around the same time that I started watching like Britney Spears and learning all these fucked up ideas about what femininity is. <gasps> I digress. I digress. I get to choose. And so the most courageous choice that I made today and the most courageous choice that I think any of us will ever make is the choice to like open into expansion and open, like say yes to life, right? And open to life even when everything in us is like, oh, and wants to like uh, contract. <laughs> contract contract and I was literally I've been working through non-resistance at the moment I go through phases of like non-resistance non-judgment non-attachment and I feel like to be honest I feel like I've kind of, I'm nailing like the first two and non-resistance is the one that's like keeps coming through for me and I literally had a girlfriend do a reading for me news if you're watching this thank you and she's like you just get to keep saying yes to life just keep saying yes everything you want is coming for you just keep saying yes to life and I'm like all right what does that feel like how could I allow even more how could I say yes even more how could I like expand into like even greater realms of bliss and it's so funny I'm sitting there and I'm like yes and my whole body's like no <laughs> and I'm like yes and my whole body's like nope <laughs> And I can feel this resistance coming through of like, I'm like trying to say yes, trying to say yes. My body's like, nope, 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 nope. Or I can feel there's a part of me that's just like, nope, 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 nope. And it's hilarious to be with that, right? Because like, I laugh about it now. In the past, I would have been like, fuck, this is so shit. But I can laugh about it now and be like, actually, I get to still sit with like the yes. And I get to still, how did I do it? I kind of just like, what would it feel like if I did say yes? Like I hear you, like the nose, I hear you and I feel you, but what would it be like if I did say yes? And what would it be like, like what would it feel like? Just imagine, like what would it mad, if I could imagine a yes, what would that feel like? <sighs> and then you start to come back to life and then things start to come back online and it's just like, it's just fun again, right? Like you just kind of drop all the attachments and you just drop all the stuff and then it's like, oh, cool, okay. And then ideas pop in. Like I had the idea to just come on and film a live and like I actually want to do shit. Like I want to go out of the house and I want to leave and I want to talk to people. And whereas before I was very much like telling stories about that were validating my contraction. Hmm, there's a piece for you. I was telling stories that were validating my contraction. Hi, Rebecca Leonard. Hello, beautiful woman. Good to see you, welcome to the live. And my stories, my the stories that my mind was telling me were very much like in alignment with the contraction that I was feeling and giving me more reasons to stay contracted. And I can keep staying contracted if I want to, like we have a choice, right? And I've stayed contracted for a very, very large portion of my life and it's, you know, it does what it does and you do what you do. But I'm playing with now like, how quickly can I come back to aliveness? How quickly can I come back to yes? How quickly can I come back to expansion? And then it's so amazing how quickly everything shifts. Like I had a whole bunch of messages. This is getting real. We're just gonna get fucking real and personal. I had a whole bunch of DMs and they all felt really scary when I looked at them today. They're all just like, I just saw, you know how you look at it and you see the little piece of it and you read it and you're like, oh, that's gonna be a shit message. <laughs> And your mind tells the stories about like, oh, especially when you're living from this place where I feel like I'm living now at this place of like creative, like vulnerability and freedom where I just fucking ask for what I want. Like I'll just from a space of love and just like pure whatever, I'll just be like, hey, let me do this for you. Or hey, can you do this for me? Or like, it's just this pure whatever. But then when I ask in that, in that state and then I contract again, I'm like, what the fuck have I done? <laughs> It's like next level vulnerability hangovers, right? It's like next level, oh my God, I need to contract. And this is the thing, right? It's expansion and it's contraction and it's all beautiful, but it's so funny how just, yeah, please just, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. But I looked at all these messages and I was like, 
oh my god, they all hate me, they're all gonna kill me, like, nobody loves me, like, it was just this, like, <gasps> and so I did my practice, and I got on my mat, and I just sat with myself, and I cried, and I did what I needed to, and I kind of just, like, allowed myself to, like, melt into a little bit more softness and a little bit more openness and I gave myself some love and I realized I was actually being really like not like mean to myself but I was ne not ne even neglecting myself I was kind of just being a little bit of a slave driver I was kind of like all right do this now do this now do this now rather than just being like love with myself in love with myself and just not attaching to how that looks and um <laughs> and so I sat with myself and I allow myself to like gently come back to love. I put on some old home movies. I put on some music. Oh my God, you guys have got to get around these playlists that I've been like curating. They kind of, I swear to God, like God communicates through me, to me through my playlists. Do you feel that? Does God do that to you too? Seriously, my angels, I swear to God, they like come and they'll like, I don't know how it happens, but they will choose a song and they'll put on the exact song that I need here at the exact perfect moment and it's so beautiful and I'll be there and I'll be like frustrated and I'll be on my mat and I'll be like oh this sucks oh my god this is hard oh my god whatever and then the song will come on and I'll be like oh and I'll start bawling my fucking eyes out because it's just so beautiful <sighs> and it just feels so good and it's like there was this song that came on before and it was something about a cradle and it was like rocking you back to love and I was just like oh I just sobbed and it was so beautiful. And I just choose to believe that that's God speaking to me through my Spotify playlists. Because, you know, God is everywhere and God is all of it. So that's how God speaks to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, when I came back to love and when I came back to expansion, I felt called to jump on here and do this live. Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm going to sit on the floor now because I'm sitting on a stool. You can't see it, but I feel like I'm... Oh. Fancy dang new tripod, hello. Oh, oh, there we go. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it first go. That never happens. Okay. If anyone ever tells you that you need to have it all together to film Facebook Lives or just like be on YouTube or just do anything, please just kindly show them this video and be like, that chick does not have her shit together and she's showing up anyway. So I can do it too. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do it too. Um, speaking of the baby voice, does anyone else notice that their inner child loves to come out and play when they're around children? Um, I've been playing with different archetypes lately. We're gonna talk about... We're gonna talk about the comb. Okay, so I threw up. We will come back to the thing about the inner child, I promise. <sighs> I threw out a comb that I've had it's been in, been in my family. It's not an heirloom, it's just a fucking pink comb. For probably about 20 years, I shit you not. This like pink, it's one of those like scratchy combs and it like hurts like fucking hell when you put it through your hair. And every time I pick up this comb, I have two. I have a black one and a pink one. And I only like, I only like the black one. The pink one's just kind of for like when I lose the black one because I lose a lot of things. But like the pink one is really only for when I lose the black one. I'll just like use it because I just ha fucking have to. And today I just finished watching some home movies and hello Tony, thank you. Hello, good to see you. And I saw like seven, 10 year old me on the home movies and I went to brush my hair afterwards and I had this knot and it was one of those moments, you know how like time stands still, I don't know what was happening, I must have still been in a trance or something, but all of a sudden I was like seven year old me and I was like yanking through my hair and like every time I'd brush my hair really hard and every time like someone else had brushed my hair and not been gentle with me just came like flooding up and I was like, oh, and I just felt like so sick. And I was like, why the fuck am I still using this comb? Why the hell am I still using it when it hurts me? And like, it, it just hurts me, full stop. Why am I still using it? And so literally I threw it in the bin and it was really symbolic and it wasn't just about the comb. And I just said to myself, I just made this commitment to myself in this moment today. I was like, I am no longer tolerating anything in my life that hurts me, but calls itself love, including from myself, mostly from myself. I am no longer tolerating anything in my life that hurts me and calls it love, right? Because 
how often, and I feel like we formulate our ideas about what love is based on the love that we received or didn't receive from our parents growing up. And so if you had a parent that experienced some form of, for whatever reason, couldn't give you the love that you needed, couldn't give you the love that you wanted, couldn't give you the kind of like nurturing, compassionate love that we need at particular stages of or all of our lives, but mostly at those early stages of our development. It's really easy for us to make connections in our mind with things that aren't actually love and with this concept of what we believe love to be. And so what we end up tolerating, and it's that classic like John Green quote, we accept the love we think we deserve, perhaps being wallflower. But we grow up believing that certain things that happened to us when we were little or certain things that our parents did to us or around us or near us or certain things that other people, maybe people in our lives that you know were close to us or in positions of power or authority over us, we begin to believe that that's love. And as we get older, we, be, we accept and we tolerate these like completely ridiculous and painful, oftentimes really, really fucking painful behaviors because we think that that's what love is, right? And just to bring it back to like a personal, because I feel like that's where I want to go with this is like, I know that my mom loves me and I knew that my mom loved me so much. But I also felt the anger and the frustration and the tension within her when she would brush my hair or when she would rush us out the door for school or when we would have to like, we would constantly be on the move, like constantly be moving and going and like in this hectic sort of state all the time. And so I associated that, I came to believe that that was what love was, that love was like rushing and that love was like tearing through my hair really quickly in the morning to get me ready for school. And that love was like plastering my hair back on my head into like the tightest bun that would give me a headache so I could go and like perform on stage and dancing. Or that love was like, love was rushing and that love was crazy and that love was chaotic and that love was like whatever. And so I became accustomed to these states of being and I came, became accustomed to chaos and I became accustomed to rushing and I became accustomed to things ripping through my hair and I became accustomed to just, you know, just deal with it, honey. Like just, you know, if it hurts, just like, you know, just be okay with it. Like you don't, this kind of like, this sense of chaos. It was, it was this sense of chaos. And I began to feel at home in the chaos because that's what I knew. And as I got older, I began to recreate that chaos in my life. And I began to rush and I began to move really quickly. And I began to do all the things at lightning speed all the time. And I began to create all this like drama and just unnecessary shit in my life because that's what I knew. And that's what I became accustomed to. And not just on like a whatever level, but on like a physical level, like my body became accustomed to it. And so what I've been doing now is teaching my body that it's okay to feel, it's, I feel safe, like it's okay when nothing is chaotic. And it's okay when, when things are chaotic, but it's okay to be calm. And it's okay to feel peaceful. And it's okay to feel open. And it's okay to feel restful and it's okay to like go slowly and to not feel rushed and so my nervous system and it's taken so long <laughs> to rewire and recalibrate my nervous system to be okay when there's like no chaos and there's no drama and there's no distractions and there's no destruction and there's just everything is just like smooth right and I don't know if we 
see chaos in the world and we try and match it in our lives or we match it in our lives so we see it, we create it in our lives so we see it in the world, I don't know. I just know that we get to create a sense of calm within the chaos all around us. And we do that by choosing openness and by choosing expansion, I think. I don't know, I think. I'm finding that I'm like, yeah. I'm finding that the less that I attach to what's going on around me, like I just completely detach from it all, the more that I can create like my sense of inner calm and then I can bring that to the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, I hope that makes sense. I don't know. <sighs> so I threw out the comb and I threw out all the things that I'm dismantling all the ideas of what I thought love was and I'm recreating my ideas of what I know love to be. Yeah. Yeah. That sounded beautiful, didn't it? Yeah. Because it's like, it's just so important. It's so important. Like what we believe love is, is like, fuck, it's everything. It's how we'll define our relationships. It's how we'll choose our partners. It's how we'll like treat our kids. It's how we'll like make our decisions. It's how we'll live our lives based on what we believe like love is. Because we're either trying to receive it and do things to try and get it, or we're trying to give it. Like, and love, like, replace that with the word God, right? Replace that with the word life. Our ideas about what life is. Our ideas about who God is and what God is. If we're not, like, examining that shit, if we're not, like aligning that with like the reality of like the highest idea we've ever had about it then what are we living out we're living out these ideas of like fake love and pseudo love and we're idolizing things and people and places and calling them gods and we're you know creating gods out of you know our phones and technology and whatever else like i could go on a rant but there's just no fucking point right it's just pointless the whole thing is pointless but you know what i mean Get it? Because life is a circle, so it's pointless. <laughs> it's also not pointless. Like, ends of the spectrum. <sighs> is this fun? I'm asking my soul right now. Like, is this fun? Are we having fun? Are we, yeah, are we good? I've been working on channeling um, some star beings, some galactic star beings, and this is about to get really fucking woo-woo for those who haven't been on this um, channel or around these parts for a little while, slash ever at all. Um, I've been feeling really called to channel like a galactic star family, which in my case is the Pleiadians. Um, so I feel very connected to a particular, um, I guess a galactic like race. It's basically, they're like highly evolved beings. Like don't make it weird. It doesn't have to be weird. I'm speaking to myself here. It doesn't have to be weird. It's just like fucking aliens and they just live on other planets and they exist in different dimensions. And they're really like some, a lot of them have had like lifetimes as humans and they've come back to like help us as we like ascend. Um, I believe, yeah, I've had lifetimes as a galactic, like as a Pleiadian, yeah. I've had lifetimes as a Pleiadian and then I've come back to earth to like aid in the ascension. Um, but it's also like, fuck, I need the, all the help I can get. Emma, yes, I'm so glad you're here. Just in time for alien chats. Oh, fuck, I love you. Um, I would be so curious to hear your take on this, my love. So recently I've been asked to channel more of like um, my galactic star family. So like the Pleiadians have been coming through like in my meditations and my readings and I call on them for support and I feel them around me when I'm emotionally releasing and just like I just call on them to like encircle me and guide me and just put their hands on me. Um, I And I'm working on like channeling, like speaking light language and channeling their essence um, through the world but i would love to hear because i know that you are galactic goddess we all are like if you're on this channel and you you know you're vibing with my stuff then you've definitely like you've either had lifetimes in other galaxies or and you've come back to aid in humanity's ascension or you are being guided and supported by the incredible light of the galactics as we like to call them um, I have had, I've had actually a few experiences. I don't know why I'm so resistant to it, but I feel like it's just cause it's a little bit like, poof. 
um, I've had experiences where I've been like I've spoken light language and I've like filmed myself doing it and I'm yet to sort of like share that with the world which is totally perfect but what I feel is like it's actually not the language itself that's important it's the transmission and it's the like the vibration right which I get to embody like in everything I do which I'm embodying right now like it's not that Oof, they're just like whoo it's so much higher and it's so much like up there and that's why I feel resistance to it sometimes because it's like oh, it's such a high vibration it feels like a little bit whew. so I'm working on really staying in my body anchoring that and then expanding it out um, Claire Bear I think you're still on here if you've got experience with light um, like galactic races or families like I would love to hear your experiences if you've been had any visitations or whatever you're feeling um, but I feel like the point and I think that what wants to come through for all of us is that we're, we're like we're conduits of their consciousness and we're conduits of like their being so like their frequency and their vibration in everything we do it's not just about like I get to channel light language and that's my gift it's like we like we're activated The more that we let go the more that they can come through us but I'm like yeah I'm still very a little bit resistant to it and I'm working on it and you know this is a beautiful step forward in me so for me so thank you for being here <gasps> that's crazy but they have just like they're really cool messages for humanity and I feel like that's what um, a lot of us are here to channel yes okay hold on a Reiki session the lady was really shook after Said I had so many presents around me, like guardians, more than she'd seen before. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Babe, you are so, oh my gosh. Like, I just take one look at you and I'm like, ah, oh, yes, you are, I don't know, Pleiadian. Like, there's Arcturian or Syrian. Like, go and Google those or whatever words, like, I'm saying, if, as I'm saying stuff. Like, yeah, Arc Arcturian, Syrian. Syrian star seeds, yeah. Just Pleiadians, like just go and Google that shit and whatever speaks to you. I just like, as soon as I heard Pleiadian, I just fucking knew. And as I've like channeled more, I can hear it in my voice as it comes through. It's like, that's my truth. Um, but yeah, like you'll know your truth. Like when you hear it, when you feel it, when you see it. But we really get to like use these energies that are coming through. That's what I'm feeling is like, yeah, we get to channel that shit because that's what we're here for. It's what my motherfucking came for, baby. This is what we came for. Da 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 na 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 na. Boom boom boom. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Okay, what do I want to talk about? So I was watching some videos of me this afternoon um, from when I was really little, I was probably like 10. And I remember at the time I watched a lot of Britney Spears, like a lot of Britney Spears. And if anyone remembers that movie Crossroads that she did, there's this scene where she's standing in a bar and she's singing I Love Rock and Roll and she's in a tiny little black mini skirt and she's got a stripper pole. And they're doing it to raise money, to pay for fuel, to get across the country because it's just Anna. Hello, beautiful sister. Hello. Um, but if you remember Crossroads, you, rem you will remember this Britney Spears scene. And they're doing it because they've run out of money. And they literally, now that I think about it, I'm like, holy fuck, like little six-year-old me, seven-year-old. I was probably a little bit older. I was probably like nine. But nine-year-old me still, that's really young, was like watching these women who have run out of money and are running away from home and driving across the country. <laughs> They walk into a bar and they dance on a stage and men throw money at them so they can put fuel in their car to keep going on their journey. Like, oh my God, no wonder I became a stripper. Like, seriously. <laughs> and I am so all for like empowered women. I fucking love dancing, not necessarily on poles because it hurts and I'm not very good at it. But I'm sure that I would love it if I kept trying and like I do want to do pole fitness one day. 
And I'm like so fucking fully embodied erotic goddess when I want to be. But there was something about like watching, because I started obviously modeling what I saw. There was something about watching my little self, like shake her hips in like a little boob tube, grinding knee high boots, little leather shorts. I was just like, oh, like, oh my God. So like, what? And it's got me thinking like whether my sexual essence was like, inherent in me which i believe it is in all of us because the, like the purest form of our sexual energy is erotic innocence which is like li like the energy that creates worlds it's pure it's completely innocent it's like it's in all of us as children because it's like the essence of our creation <sighs> but i feel like along the way and again it's the same with what i was saying before what we're taught about love or what we see in the world and we're taught is love is what we will come to expect love to be. It's the same with sex and sexual energy. Like I might've like had this like essence within me as like a little girl and as a young child, which I believe that we all do. But when I took it to the world, what I saw was like Britney Spears doing this and women doing this and you know, so-and-so doing this. And so that's what I learned. And this kind of actually, now that I'm saying it, like there's no, there's no charge around this for me anymore. It's kind of like, this is just what happened. This is what I saw. And this is what happened as a result. So it's like, I kind of saw like Britney Spears doing that. And so I was like, oh, cool. Okay. So my sexual energy is to be channeled in this way. And I will dance on stages and men will throw money at me. And that is what my life will be. Wonderful. <laughs> and there's just like, the like my lack, my own lack of judgment right now is really surprising me. I'm like, I'm so not judging this. I'm so not judged around it. I must have released a lot of shame and trauma and stuff around that. But it's just, you know, it's just what happened. But I feel like, yeah, that was just the story that I created. It was like, this is what it means to be a sexual creature. And this is what it means to be a sexual woman. And this is what it means to be a sexually empowered goddess. Like... I will dance on stages and men will throw money at me and I will use that money to buy fuel for my car and that car will take me places to fulfill my dreams. <laughs> this is making so much sense for me. Welcome to my therapy session. <laughs> Swear to God, you guys, especially projectors, put on a fucking camera, talk it out. You will literally like save yourself years in therapy, but also have so much fun while you're doing it. <laughs> Thanks, Clever. Thanks for the love hearts. Um, but yeah. So that was the story that I created around sexuality and also around money, probably, and abundance. And like, that's what I have to do in order to get money is to dance and to be my erotic energy and be on a stage and I will receive it from men. And like, that's just what will happen. Um, and Britney Spears seemed to love it. And Britney Spears is very famous and successful and she felt she seemed very happy towards the end. Um, and there's so, like, I, th I feel like there's peace here around, there's so many messages you could get from that movie, and there are so many messages that you could get from every, like, piece of culture, if you want to call it that, that's ever been created. This is just, like, there's so many facets of the truth that you could have taken from that. Like, someone, a young girl might have watched that, and maybe her mum made a comment about, like, oh, her skirt is so short. So, like, her mind made this story or created the meaning that, like, I can't wear short skirts, otherwise, like, I... I won't be loved by my mother, right? Like, oh, okay, Chad, it's good to see you on here. Beautiful man, you've just like, that's just triggered me that I'm like, wanna speak about my life feminine. Thank you, thanks so much. Um, so to that end, completely, it'll all link together as it always does. But I have been, new story, I've been, um, anchoring in really like embodying my light feminine and you can feel it she's just come online because i've just gotten all girly but seriously um there's this beautiful like archetype of the light feminine goddess that has like enamored and fascinated me for so long and i feel like i've been on a journey i was definitely very much in my light feminine in most like mostly healthy integrated ways but there was some like kind of like unhealthy like shadowy stuff that like pieces of myself that i'd yet to love that came up for me like a year and a half ago. I came into, I experienced some like pretty hectic, like 
backlash from my light being in my light feminine I got called privileged people kind of were like you can't make it look that easy like you basically are just like writing off suffering like it wasn't that bad but people were basically like stop being privileged um, and so I kind of I took that to my coach and I was like hey um, I've got these pieces of me that I don't really know what to do with and one of them was this like light feminine archetype of like the saint and she's like Mother Teresa and I'm like I'm here to bring light I'm here to anchor light on the planet like it's just what I'm here to do. I'm here to be a motherfucking bundle of joy. <laughs> like It's just what I'm here to do. And regardless of what's going on around me, regardless of the world, I just know. And this is from a very like, I just fucking know that this is what I'm here to do. And deep down, I feel like I also know that like joy is what changes the world. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, let's just not overcomplicate it. It's just joy is what changes the world. But because I copped backlash for that and because um, I also felt like a little bit guilty and I felt like my privilege wasn't like, I wasn't, you know, I just, it felt icky. Like I felt really like I don't really know what to do with this. Like I feel like if I show up as really happy, then, you know, people aren't going to take me seriously. Or if I, you know, if I show up in the world as this light, like angelic being, people are going to be like, what the fuck is she on? Like, has she seen the state of the world? I had this idea that like the light feminine, which is very much like, just to describe her for you guys playing along at home. The light feminine is very much, she's joy. She exudes like radiance. She's charismatic, but she's also just like, she trusts life. She just fucking trusts life. She's like the daughter of the divine, right? She's that like angelic priestess. She's just, she exudes that positivity and that feminine, deep, like deep feminine radiance. It's just like, everything's gonna be okay. She's like the divine mother in a sense that she just knows that she's just gonna nurture and that all is well and all will be well. And she's just like, she's just the embodiment of light, right? And I feel like that part of myself, I was just like, whoa. Like, how can I show up as light in a world with so much darkness? even though that's exactly what I'm here to do, how can I do that? Like, it feels like wrong, it feels scary, it feels like I'm being like boastful or bragging or outlandish, it feels like, I just don't know. And so my, my light feminine copped a lot of stuff from me and I feel like I've judged her, I feel like I've, oh, I'm thankful for those experiences because they sent me on the journey of integrating her and like really embodying and exploring my dark feminine. <laughs> But it's like I'm feeling this call now to like embody the light again and to just come back into this space of like pure trust and openness and surrender and like, fuck, everything's gonna be okay, I promise. Like everything's gonna be okay. When we're all like vibrating in this beautiful frequency of life and light, like it's just gonna be fine and we're all gonna, it's gonna be better than fine. It's gonna be amazing. And as I'm doing that, like, can you feel like the inner judgments of like, I don't know, I'm just projecting my own judgments onto you guys, but I, I fully welcome, like if you guys wanna use this as a space to reflect like your own inner light feminine, the piece in you that knows that it's all gonna be okay and the piece of you who's just, who is here to just anchor and embody light on the planet, use the judgments that you're having around me right now as a reflection of what's like, like the piece that's coming up for you. Cause I'm just a mirror, right? I'm not actually here, I'm just a mirror. I'm just reflecting back to you. Whatever you're judging me for is just a place where peace within yourself that like um, that you haven't fully like integrated yet or like a reflection of where you're judging yourself. And so my judgments around that were like, it doesn't even matter now, but I'm just saying I had a lot of judgments. And so I did this ritual this afternoon where I got two beautiful roses. We've got some roses in our house. I can't be bothered. I'm like, something's like, go and get them. I can't be bothered. Um, but I set them out on my, like, in my ritual space, um, just like a mattress on the floor, ritual space, beautiful blanket, rose quartz crystals, pink roses. And I just sat with my light feminine and I was like, hey, I'm sorry for judging you and let's just play and let's just see what happens. And I ended up just like playing with the rose and just like guiding it over my skin. And it was, didn't mean anything and I didn't have to get anywhere or be anything or be anyone or do anything. It was just like, oh, I can just play in it. I can just have fun. I can just relax. And I feel like that's what the light feminine wants to do is she just wants to play. She just wants to fucking relax. She just wants to have fun. And I don't know about you guys, but I just overcomplicate that shit so much. I really do. And I make it mean that it's like I'm naive and I make it mean that I'm like 
wrong or I just judge the fuck out of myself. <laughs> so I used to judge the fuck out of myself when I was in that space. Um, and so now I'm just making the commitment to show up as more of my light feminine because I know that like, she's not naive. She's actually really fucking like graceful and she just exudes this beautiful like, she's such a gift. She's such a gift. My light feminine is such a gift. It's such a big part of what I'm here to give the world and so is yours. Your light feminine, whether you're male or female, in a male or female body right now, whatever body you're in, you have that beautiful light feminine energy within you. She's the part of you that just trusts. She just knows. She's so connected to the divine that she's like, there's an, she's like infinite order and natural intelligence, right? She's the part of us that's like, I, the sun came up today, the ocean is coming in, mother nature is doing her thing. Claire Bear, you embody this, you reflected this really beautifully back to me the other day. It was a couple of weeks ago now. What, what is time? <laughs> but you said something and you said, um, I said, I asked how you were coping in amongst, this is back when I was buying into the illusion of like the chaos in the world. Don't have to buy into the illusion. Who knew? And you were like, yeah, you did. You said something really beautiful and you were like, I just, I'm, I just, I don't know. Like the birds are still chirping. The butterflies are still flying. The, like the sun is still shining and my garden feels great. And to me, like, and you're like, and I just, like, I just, you know, that's how I know it's just going to be okay. Like how, I think you said something like, how could anything be crazy when that stuff's going on? Say the thing below, say the thing, please say the thing. Um, but to me, that's just like, that's the embodiment of this most beautiful light feminine essence. Like she just knows everything's going to be okay. And the more that I embody her, the more that I just get to trust in the flow of life. And the more that I just get to surrender to the fact that things are all happening for me, I just get to open. And it's not even about like I open so that better things happen. It's like I open so I can have the fucking experience of opening because it feels good to open. It feels really good. Even though it's scary, even though it's like terrifying sometimes to open in the face of the things that have hurt you, to open in the face of the things that scare you, to open in the face of the things that like are uncertain and unknown and like, oh my God, what is gonna happen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smushy face. I know it's scary, but I also know that it feels good. And I also know that it's like where all the answers are. So those of us who are like judging the fuck out of him being like, well, you're not going to come up with any solutions to any problems. This is like me judging me. <sighs> you're not going to, it's so fun. You're not going to come up with any solutions to any problems when you're like just flying high all the time. That's when you come up with the best solutions to all the problems. Like when you are in the realm where there is no problems. Like, ah, this is landing so hard for me right now. This is great. I hope it's landing for you guys too. This is fun. Seriously, a whole point. Have fun. Fuck yeah. But it's like, the irony is like the solutions to all this shit that you think is wrong with the world and that we think is wrong with the world actually lies in the quantum, which you access by being in high vibrational states right and so like it's all well and good to be like well i need to vibrate down here because that's where all the suffering is and i need to keep my eyes on the suffering and i need to keep looking at the suffering yeah we know that there is suffering happening we know that there's like we know that the human beings are suffering in the world we also know that the solutions and the best ideas which I believe are the solutions. Like I can hear people being like, but we don't need to solve anything. We just need to be with what is. And I get that, but also like fucking, we want to create shit. Cause like, why else would we be here? And it's kind of fun. So it's like the best ideas for the best creations, which end up being the solutions that end everyone suffering, right? Happen when we're in these high vibrational states or when we're vibrating in alignment with our openness and with our joy and in these frequencies of freedom can't solve a problem at the same level of consciousness that you created it right and so or that it was created that's a quote that's a direct quote i didn't make that up and i will find the person who quoted that because i'm very particular about those sort of things but it's like holy fuck what if we could just poof, allow ourselves to be in higher and higher and higher states of vibrational alignment and like joy and bliss and all the things and then trust that like the ideas drop in and the things that we need, like the things that we need to create drop in and the things that whatever need to drop in. 
all of this to say, like, I found myself getting caught up in the chaos of the last few weeks and like really going down the rabbit hole of like, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong. It's not wrong to do that. And it's, I don't, like, it wasn't quote unquote bad. It just ended up being ineffective for me because it was taking me out of my alignment and it was taking me out of a place where I could actually fucking do anything about it. The light feminine knows like I'm here to serve humanity and I'm here to do that through like my essence and my radiance and who I truly am in the world. I am of the highest service when I am of the highest vibration. I am of the highest service when I am of the highest alignment. I am of the highest service when I am in my fucking love bubble. <laughs> like Glinda from, is it Glinda? Alphabet, Glinda from Wicked in my love bubble and like serving the world through that way. And this isn't about like a, cause there's, you know, no, I'm not even going to justify it. There's a whole nother piece around like privilege and being like staying in your tower and not actually like wrestling with broken heartedness. And I feel all of that. Um, but I also feel like we are here. We are here to be light unto the world and whatever we need to do to protect that light, to serve that light, to like be in that light, to love that light, we then we can just like show up as light wherever we are. And that's like, it's just, it's beautiful. And it's a gift and it's a blessing. And so, and it feels good. Like it just fucking feels good. Beyond all of that, it just fucking feels good. So my commitment to myself and to the world is to just show up as light now. And knowing that my dark feminine is fully like, she's fucking there, she's got my back and I know how to be in that. I also just, I just trust that everything's gonna be okay and I'm looking for evidence that everything's gonna be okay. And I'm looking for evidence of the natural, intel infinite intelligence. What, what's it called? Divine intelligence? There's like a, you know what I mean? There's like, I'm looking for evidence of that natural order of things and the divine intelligence that rules the planets and that I'm allowing to let live through me. <sighs> I don't think I breathed that whole time. <laughs> breath is like the quickest way to do this, which is ironic. Let's take some time. Let's take some breaths. Let's take all the breaths together. <sighs> Wherever you are, just dropping in. I'm just gonna put my hand here because it feels really good to have some fingers on my third eye right now. But wherever you feel like you need your attention, wherever you feel like you need your, your breath, wherever you feel like you need your conscious awareness, which is all that the light is, it's just fucking awareness, is place your hands there now and we're just gonna take some breaths and breathing in. And slowly out. And breathing in. This meridian point on our body, breathing it in. <sighs> so good, you guys. So good. All right. That's all that I really want to talk about today. I feel like I just didn't do this video for any particular reason. I just did it because it was fucking fun. It felt fun. And why the fuck not? So I'm glad that you were here. Thank you so much for everyone that's joined me live. Thank you for everyone that's watching the replay. And thank you so much for everyone that's watching this live or on my youtube channel when i've uploaded it um i'm thankful that you're here i'm grateful that you're alive on the planet right now and um yeah let's just let's bring this baby home <laughs> i've not said that before but i feel like it's gonna be my new like send off let's bring this baby home let's bring this baby home remember you get to choose please just keep remembering you get to choose you get to choose you get to choose Thank you, Claire Bear. Thanks for being here, my love. We get to choose. 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 I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Feels really good to be here with you all. Yeah. Your softness, your radiance. It's all such a gift. I love you so much.